You're listening to PDR Tool Talk, all about PDR stories, tools, and techniques. For the thousands in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time, episode 123. And today we have our guests or our host, Vince D'Alessandro, John Rinstrom. We got a couple of special guests. We got a special guest walking in with Vince. Hi, Christina. Hi. Vince. <laughs> Hi. Vince is doing a remote location from uh, Texas this week. Yeah. Right there in Craig and Lisa's house. And They're hanging out here, a dire residence. They're wonderful hosts. How is your guys' uh, week? How's things going there? Things are good, man. Things are good. I'm, I'm super busy. You know, we had the sale going on this week. By the time we're listening to this on Tuesday, Magnatech Matt sale had been come and gone, and, and someone is going to be the recipient of a couple good sets of tools. So, right. you know, yeah. Right. So that's why I'm here in Anson, in case anyone was wondering. All right. I finally got my little happy butt off of vacation and uh, I'm actually pushing some hail dance and I'll probably stay busy for the rest of the summer. And how right is that? On. Do you want to, do you want to reveal where you are and, and the damage situation? Is it gravy? Uh, is it hammered? Well, do I don't know. Secret? I don't really, I can't really give a damage report yet. Cause today is my first day. I just got here. We had bus. We were in Niagara Falls, New York, and now I am sitting in Wyoming. We had to cruise 1,700 miles and get across the country and get to work. So we left early Monday morning. I got all my tools kicked out last night, set up, and in the shop. The first job I got was a butt kicker. The hood was just destroyed. And uh, it was uh, the eat it panel to sell the uh, better jobs that the rest of the family had on the other cars. So. Oh, wow. Well, here's the deal. Being at Anson for the last couple of days, they had one of their best Mays ever with tool sales. So if that's an indication of anything, they believe that it's a great hail year. People are griping out there that there's not a lot of hail out there. There is hail. And if you're still sitting at home, you're you're not doing yourself a favor at this point. You got to get, get off the couch and start making phone calls and start knocking on doors. Yeah, it's it's pretty well broke free. And, and a lot of guys, I mean, from mobile tech standpoint, we know when the hail starting to work because we see the, the new signups. Because what happens is the hail techs start moving around and they start going into all these local markets and working for the local guy and show our software off. And then the local guy loves it and signs up. So we start seeing high number of signups, you know, six to 10 every single day. And we know that hail is, is starting to kick off nationwide because sure. those, those guys can come from anywhere. If you're sitting on your butts, you're doing yourself a disservice. Get out there, get on your team or, or whoever and, and get out there and start pushing. And knock on some doors. Get through the inside. Don't don't always wait for that phone to call. Well, I, I heard from a anonymous source that he had a couple of friends just sitting on the couch waiting for the phone to ring. I was like, well, they're not going to get any work then. No, not not this year. I beat on a lot of doors too, and I, I I'll be honest, I beat on a lot of doors and got a lot of nowhere. I did go on vacation, having fun, and then my phone did ring. You know, worst case scenario, make good plans because this business likes to interrupt your plans in a hurry there you go <laughs> is that your tech tip that's, take, that take is my tech tip yeah take, take a, a vacation yeah. you know race uh race stanfu is it i yeah Ray. i see him cross yeah. yeah he he always complains that every time he goes on vacation and that guy lives the life man he goes on exotic vacations and every time he goes on a vacation boom hail hail hits <laughs> He knows it. So, like, he's been to Iceland and all over the world. And I guess next next February we'll uh, put together a little fundraiser and we'll send his ass on vacation for March, man. We need that hail early next year. <laughs> <laughs> so what's our topic today, gentlemen? 
Today we're going to talk about some uh, techniques and I'm going to be talking about techniques, big, complicated dents. So what are my techniques when you've got not just one dent, but the dent is actually like three dents put together. I'm going to talk a little bit about my techniques and what tools I'm, I'm using for that. And All right, start us off. Okay. Get in it. Let's go. So one of the, one of the techniques that um, I first launch into, of course, I'm going to be glue pulling to start off with. So I'm looking for my pinch points. Of course, I I always use my hustle stick when I can. Most of the time, most of my big hits are usually in quarter panels. I just did a Honda that was pretty severe. I ended up using my Kiko that the I beams that they have that I got this year at Mobile Tech Expo. This this dent went down to the edge of where the bumper line is and that whole edge was pinched and I used those I beams along there with my hustle stick which gives me tons and tons of leverage. I pulled out that whole body line really cleanly which set the tone for the rest of the dent. Then I hit the rest of the pin, pinch points with glue pulling with my green oval tabs, my uh, gangrene oval tabs, and hit all my pinch points first and try to get those released. I follow up with coming in with a just whatever rod I can get in. And I usually use my dent craft large balls or mushroom type of tip whatever I can fit in there as large as possible. I go around and I try to to rough out the whole dent and get get the integrity back. So when you start start hammering on it, the metal when you start hammering on all your eyebrows in various places, that it has somewhere to go. There's some integrity into the panel. It's not oil canning on you. So I try to get it to that point. I don't really care how ugly it looks. In fact, all, a lot of times those kind of dents, they they look pretty ugly. They look like, oh, yeah. like an amateur worked on it. They, yeah, they always get worse before they get better. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, I actually, I posted this story this morning on Facebook even, doing what you were talking about. I egoed out, this was back in 2010, I egoed out. And I just randomly slapped a glue tab on a box side. The first glue pull I made went completely south. I did not release the pressure properly. I didn't release those pressure points. I got my butt kicked. And I screwed up the entire repair, what should have been a great repair. And doing what you were just talking about is what I didn't do. And I ruined the whole repair. I had to give my time away. Uh, I ruined the panel. It, it was terrible. Hmm. You know, one of the funny things, I was talking to Kevin Andrews today, and we were talking about different techniques with big dents and whatnot. And one thing that came up was Mike Toledo's uh, Mazda Miata. You guys probably saw the video. It was, it's was it got like 10 billion views on YouTube. And it was really one of those videos that was pretty extreme. And we were, we were commenting on how we would never, ever in this day and age fix that dent the way that he did it. That was Kevin's first thing out of his mouth. He said, I can't believe he put a big Keko tab right in the middle and just yanked the crap out of it. You know, what worked five or six years ago is completely different than what's working. Oh, so the metals, now. Yeah, the metals are completely different. I mean, sure. we're seeing a lot more. Like, Daniel, you just got into one of the new Nissan pickups with that ultra high strength steel in the doors. Yeah. 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 That You're not throwing a tab in the wrong spot on one of those or pushing in the wrong spot. No, when you on push on that, it you, you swear it's aluminum. And then you yeah. put a magnet on and the magnet sticks and you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, those things are insane. Yeah. And I'm not putting Mike on blast because Mike actually, we've talked about this recently, that Mazda Miata, he would have totally done it different now than he did back that sure yeah. sure but it worked in that particular case it did uh, mine I, I totally started it wrong and it really it put my ego in check uh it made me uh dent guy check myself and from then on it was like well take a moment study the dent find what's holding the pressure release those pressure points and then drive down those crowns and that's and that's one of the things is is once you got it roughed out i try to beat the hell out of it, get it to one level. Whatever that level is, it doesn't matter. But I, I try to do it all with a blending hammer, try to get it at one level, and then 
and then bring it to where I need to. And one of the techniques that I want you guys to try, if you guys don't do this already, is so I switched to an ultra soft tip, work in line with the light. So work up and down, like if you're on a quarter panel, work up and down, not horizontal. You you're saying go vertical versus horizontal. Right. You'll notice you won't get the corn rows. You'll have to do, you won't have to do as much cross checking when you're working a large den. Now it's different than like a, a smaller dent where you're going to, you know, spiral out this is a much bigger area. So you work in line with the light and you'll notice that uh, you won't get the cornrows. Now, what size soft tip are you using? So I use the vinyl ones, the harder vinyl ones, and then I wrap it with Tessa tape. Okay. I like a nice yeah. soft tip when I'm doing that. There's so many wrong ways that that conversation could go. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> That's what several you, times. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel does have a, a soft tip. Yep. <laughs> he oh, is I have a hard tip. Anyways. I have a hard soft tip. <laughs> a hard soft tip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, when doing the hard, sharp, big hail, that the kind of hail dents, like you see in Wiley, Texas, that sort of stuff, blows up big, leaves that hard crease in the bottom of those. I'm using a uh, dent craft let me make sure i get the the proper model number the r16p the plastic uh large plastic ball and i'm using that and then i work that hard crease in the bottom of that hail dent and that's what i use to start that and i get that up till can you it's, repeat that number again that's the r16p 16p okay yeah you broke up a little bit right? oh, okay yeah yeah well you know, I did say I was in Wyoming, so I think they sure. shot the horse and ate it. So I'm not sure how the internet's getting out of here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the R16P is their large plastic tip. It allows me to move along quick. A lot of times, if if you're doing the shallower, softer hail, I'm finishing with that same tip. And the the beauty of using that, you never mar the e coat. You don't cut through that e coat at all. Yeah, I've had great luck even with the R4 Cherry Cap, but this is a much larger plastic ball and it's just been it's been phenomenal that's awesome to finish off like the techniques when it, then how i finish off these large dents i switch to a sharp tip and then 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 i switch to my my vip knockdown and i just start beating the crap out of it getting all the nooks and crannies and everything and now I, when you're talking a sharp tip are you talking like a, a dent crap like number one or are you talking like get into an edgy tools uh, golf tee, you know, the, uh, the needles. I, I use the ultra sharp tips. Okay. The one I, I tend to like best, unless it's aluminum panel, then I'll, then I'll go with like uh, Woody's sharp tips or anybody yeah. else's just something okay. a lot sharper. But I like the, I like the ones from ultra. They're not super, super sharp or, or I kind of, they get kind of worked down a little bit. That's what I have opposite of my plastic ball is that I, ultra sharp tip. But I do like the number ones, uh, especially if I'm working the tool at an angle. The nice thing about the number one, it acts like a sharp tip, but it's always consistent. So no matter what angle you're at, it's always got a consistent uh, feel to yeah. it. I was using the number one because it's it's such a super popular seller. It's easy for people to picture that that yeah. tip shape and size. So. Unless unless you get some sound deading material, and then then you do need something sharper, or you know you start using your hot box to to warm it up and try to scrape that yeah. stuff out. You know, depending on what it is. That's when my edgy sharps and the uh, dead on dent bullet sharp tips are coming out. And that's when I'm working through that sound deadener pad or like the Ford Fusions that have that bed liner underneath them. Um, now, do you guys use the match grade to push with? I'm curious. Never. I don't. No, I only no. use it for tapping back. Yeah, same here. So I recently started using it more on motorcycles because metal tips. You know, you get the, it, it, it just leaves a, a sharp little tit. 
I started using the match grade to push with on motorcycles. It works extremely well. Now they're not having any problem with the gasoline. I don't have gasoline in the tanks. Okay. I what wasn't do you mean? like they would break it down the match grade material. Oh yeah, I was curious. If, did it make it if it, if your wrist making it softer or anything like that? You know, question. Uh, the only motorcycle uh, I should say the only motorcycle tank that I've ever done or the tanks that I've done always had gas in them and I did them on the bike. That's um, that's the biggest problem. Trying to do it on the bike, it moves too much. Um, you're using using more of your strength to, to push it in. It'll wear you out right. faster. And then the gas is a problem because it'll make any tip gummy and yeah, slippery. Exactly. And you end up smelling afterwards and <laughs> sucks. Yes. Us dead guys don't like getting dirty or smelly. No, we don't. <laughs> but if you do get, they, they actually sell this. Um, I bought some stuff online on Amazon. So when you do get gas on you, you spray it on you and it takes away the gas smell. And then you just wash your hands and you don't smell like gas. So you know what that? that's called? I, it's I called think it's Tide. gas off. I think it's called gas off. It's Tide. called Tide. <laughs> Go get yourself some Tide detergent. And put a little powder on your hands. It takes it really? right off. Yeah. Yeah, but. The, yeah. If you if you put Tide on your hands, you're going to risk a millennial coming along and licking your fingers. Oh, that's true, oh. too. <laughs> cool. Bust open the Tide pod. Just don't so, do it in front of a millennial. My techniques that I do and the tools that I use. And uh, let's uh, move on to John. Well, I kind of talked about you, the... Uh, what are your techniques doing? Some hail, man. That's like one of the things. What do you do on a sharp glue sharp small dent really small like smaller than a dime open access sharp, and on a rail all right so on a glue pull and, and uh here we go back we're talking about the woody's uh match grade tips so i've got his blunt tip on my knockdown and you take that sharp that deep sharp tight dent on a rail and you open it up you might have started with one that was a dime size or smaller than a dime size, but man, by the time I get done beating the hell out of it with that tip, that sucker's an oversized dent. And then I start glue pulling it. And the idea is you get in there and you get that sharp bottom and you take away that ledge going around that's holding that sharp, sharp bottom in that dent and you soften it out and you make it bigger and, and you just keep going around and then pretty soon, she just glue pull right on out of there. Um, okay. But a lot of times, it'll still leave that little pit. If it leaves that pit, do it again. You didn't get all of that sharp ridge off that top side of that thing. And what tabs are you using? Now, I have an intermix of tabs that I carry on my cart at all times. I've got the new tequila tabs, which have been awesome. Been happy with those. The black ice, the gangrene, the root beers. And I have all of those in the same tray. And I also have some of the compression series. The white compression series from Anson have been great. The pink are a very soft one. But I have all of those. I'll glue pull, and one time, one of the tabs just won't stick, no matter what. doesn't matter what glue I'm using. The tab, I'll just reach over, say I'm using a gangrene, it didn't want to stick. I'll grab a root beer, put it on there, and it'll glue pull right the first try. It could, it could happen with any one of them. So I keep that variety of tabs. But that variety of tabs has just been a moneymaker for me. So I don't have any one specific, uh, there's times when a lock a tab, well, uh, grab it, you know, and I, and I'll be like, look, digging through the, the bin on the top of my TDN cart and, and be like, ah, there's this one, this is going to be my magic tab. And, so, and it, by God it is, you know, and I also run Isn't three glue guns. That works? I also run three glue guns. I've got two limited and a Carl Stuckey glue gun. And I've got hog glue running through my Carl Stuckey. I've got cheap Walmart glue running through one of the limitants, and then I've got glue tracks tab weld in third stick combinations running through the other eliminate glue gun. And it's a guarantee that I'll find one of those glue combinations along with one of those tab combinations that'll pull out anything on anything that I'm working on. And it has not failed me yet. And I worked a lot with Craig at Anson learning that glue tracks tab weld combination and then hog glue come on the market. And that's been a bit of a, just threw a wrench in the entire thing that I'd already figured out. So <laughs> it's been, it really hooks up. Like today, 
man, I had a bad dent on the front of this F-250 hood, bang, right there with the robo lifter. And it just, it pulled it up and it knocked it out and it broke the glue free underneath. I was able to slide a whale tail in it and, and finish it out. But they you love how clean it comes off? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's I've, in fact, the shop I'm at now, I've got guys testing, testing it out, playing with some stuff. Because they're still using the old Kiko Kiko blue tabs, you know, they, they liked them, God. you know, and they were, they were a great tab, but it's like, man, science guys, science has come along. Yes. Science. <laughs> so, but that's the technique for doing those, those sharp dents. And I see it come across Facebook a lot and it gets talked about, but what's that spread out and what does that mean? And if you actually get your light up tight and really study that dent, heck, grab a magnifying Cal, Cal Contreras, so he, he'll, uh, Sal Contreras, he'll use a magnifying lens and look at his dent. I'm not kidding. He will do that. No, I'm sometime. laughing about the Cal. Cal. Yeah. Cal. No, the, Cal the his brother he's, Cal. Yeah. The Cal, reason he's yeah. using the magnifying glass, he can't see. Because <laughs> he's, he's old like me. <laughs> but yeah. if you if you look at that dent, you're going to see that there's a there is a ridge right at that pit. And once you get that tapped out, then she starts glue pulling like a nice soft dent. You know, maybe I'm not not hammering it out enough because I've been trying to open them up. I'll be honest, it's, I have the same issue, Daniel. Yeah. I'll I'll be like, yeah, I opened that puppy up good. She's got it. And I'll glue pull it and it'll just leave the pit. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, and then I'm tapping it back out. But you know, like I said, persistent persistence wins. You know, I'm I'm glue pulling, I'm figuring I'm ending this dent one of two ways. Either it's coming out like glass. Or there's not going to be no paint left, and then it's truly a paintless repair when yeah. I get done with it. <laughs> and uh, I've only I pulled paint a few times since I switched over, uh, switched to the Robo Lifter, and now the B and D. I've been using that quite a bit too, and with the uh, a slide hammer with the spring on it, popping paint. I've cut that out. I probably stopped ninety five percent of my pulling paint, and I'm getting a lot more successful. And just uh, and I'm bidding some ugly stuff. I mean. You're marking these up double oversized markup for the glue pull. I mean, you're hitting these rails at four digits. Yeah. So, you know what's cool? You you mentioned the B and D mini lifter, and I, I finally got to see it today at Anson when I was there. And this is a creation that, you know, it's made by B and D, and a lot of people they don't give a lot of credit to B and D. And in fact, I, I I really dislike their tools. Their hand tools are are, are not anywhere near my shop and their shop is literally like a half a mile away from my shop. But anyways, uh, Craig has influenced them to redesign their mini lifter. It's completely done to Craig's specifications and the mini lifter looks really sweet. It's a little and work of art. It is. It, it, and it's not badly priced either. I, I might end up buying one before I leave Texas this weekend. Well, their door jammer was my go-to door jammer for years. I mean, well, it was best I'm going to, I'm going to give you an inside tip here from some knowledge that I gained. Their door jammer is the number one selling door jammer here at Anson tools. Yeah. So, and that's why they've worked with Anson and Craig did make a couple changes on it. So you could buy the B and D one, or you could buy the Anson version, which is, an extreme version of of their original one yeah and we just got that and it now it's my go-to it exactly it, the, the wheels are are smoother yeah. they work better than my b and d um i had some problems with my b and d and i had to put some washers in there but the that new anson one is great it's got texture which i really like so you when you're sure. grabbing it it feels yeah. good in your hand you can't now it. i've i've got that door jammer but i have yet to use it um, okay. I well, here's the other thing too. If you bought the dent technology one, it's garbage. It's literally garbage. They had so many come back with issues with the nut, like you said, Daniel, but consistently bad. So don't discount if you got the copycat dent technology one, don't discount that design because it, it was a, a copy off of the original B and D design. So yeah. that's a little bit of inside knowledge that I just obtained. I might get in trouble for that once they hear this podcast. 
Hey, you're telling, telling your opinion. You're, you're entitled to it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's, it's a big shocker when we hear that something is falling apart from dent technologies. <laughs> yeah. So, so but anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, how about, uh, how about you, Vince? You got, yeah, what's, what do you got for us? Okay, what I got for you is a video that I did. One of the first videos I ever did with Mike Toledo was the hammer dolly technique and you guys you're talking about sharp dents john and i i use that technique all the time but it's not just with a dolly i don't use a, a hand dolly or a heel dolly all the time sometimes if it's behind the brace i actually still have a dent wizard master tool i'll slip that behind there and leverage and push up on it to raise the dent up and then i take my craftsman hammer with the red side and i I flatten it out immediately. I mean, it's like boom, 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 and you're moving the the dolly around or the master or any type of slapper tapper that you could get behind the dent. And by moving it, rocking it around while you're tapping it on the outside of the metal, you're taking a sharp dent. I could take a dent that was made by a BB and flatten that sucker out within seconds. That all I have to do is grab a sharp tip tool, which you guys. I, I use the same ones. I use the Ultra or I use the Edgy Gator Tooth, which is yeah. super sharp. You know, those are my two fine sharp tips and pick it out. You might need to cut it down with a little bit 2000 when you're done, but it doesn't matter because you got that done up immediately and quick and dissipated the stretch portion of that and saving the while keeping the paint intact. So I, I'm finding myself doing that more often not just on open access where i could get a dolly behind there but anywhere that i could get a flat bar behind there as well and maybe i have to leverage off of another piece of uh, piece behind there you know if you're in a quarter panel you might have to leverage off of the inner brace and push it up there just to kind of rock it up against there and hitting it on the outside you know they're, they're old metal techniques but with our knowledge of pdr we're able to do it and still save the paint and save a ton of time. Yeah, that's a great technique. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever like if, when you got those really sharp Audis, one of the things I do is I have a, a rubber coated heel dolly. What I did is I drilled a hole through it and I stick it on my hood prop and I stick it up behind the dent and then I use my knockdown to knock down that sharp if it's a keep the panel from flexing so much huh you do that to keep the panel from flexing so much Bounce no, if you've got a sharp dent the only way to shrink uh a, a sharp audi it's the only yeah. way to shrink it you have to have a dolly behind it yeah um, yeah you're keeping the panel rigid so it doesn't flex so yeah. much yeah but saying. the rubber heel dolly it's got enough give for that metal to move still right yeah yeah so yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the techniques I've been using a lot lately because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. This job is getting harder at times. You know, I have to figure out ways of, of saving my body a little bit and getting things up quicker without, you know, too much strain on my body. Yeah, that's yeah. why we started ordering Steinliner tools. Oh, exactly. I mean, that, that killer whale acts like a dolly behind the dent. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking about was last week when you were describing the action of the, the killer whale, and then you're talking about what you're using the dolly for. And, uh, yeah, I could see then how that killer whale really comes into effect. No, so I sure. Just, I just got the new uh, mini pirate hook. Got to use it a little bit today. Love that thing. It goes down through a window. I wish it was a tiny bit longer. But down through a window, does it have enough kick to get to the panel? Yeah. Well, no. it depends on, the, of course. Yeah, I was going to say it's going to If it's, yeah, it's not going to do the old school tourist door roll. No, no. But the killer whale will. Yeah, yeah. Really? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You you got you went and got your octagons put on those. I got octagons on all of them, and I've been using them all yeah. week until I left here for Texas. Yeah, and that's it, the way to go. It is the way to go. There's a little tiny bit of play. And I talked to Thomas from Stanliner yesterday while I was getting on the plane. Kaz himself did not 100% approve of <laughs> putting the, <laughs> the octagons Imagine on. That. But, yeah, because we kind of, you know, 
defaced his tools a little bit, but he understands where we were going with it. So uh, it's, it's going to be an individual preference when it comes down to it. Some guys are going to want to put an octagon just to have the diversity and other guys are just going to keep the tool intact. Well, so what I saw, I saw, form. I saw Mike even had the handle. So he kept the original handle. Yeah, me too. We put a female on the other side. Yeah, that's slick. Yeah. Nice. That, that's the part that costs $65. It'll cost you $25 to put an octagon on any tool. But if you want a female, the female is going to cost you 65 Boy, isn't that the truth. Right? But it is ratcheting. <laughs> it's ratcheting and it's oh, quick really? release. So for 65 that's not too bad. No, that's actually yeah, that's pretty good. It is starting yeah. to sound more and more female. Ratcheting, quick release. Right. <laughs> Take you to the cleaners. <laughs> You get all your tools done in that. It'll definitely take you to the cleaners. <laughs> so, well, should we uh, move on to our man on the street, guys? I yeah, think so. I think it's so. It's John, who do we have today? Today we've got Stephen Hamby. <laughs> He's coming to us from Georgia. How you doing, Stephen? I'm doing great. Uh, we had some sunshine today for the first time in like two weeks, so I'm doing pretty well i got to swim in the where pool. are you in bermuda or something uh <laughs> ireland no worse i'm in griffin georgia <laughs> so, it's way worse it's worse than any place <laughs> but uh but yeah i'm about 40 minutes south of atlanta is that you where you that. live or is that where you're pushing that's where i live um i actually just most days I'm usually traveling about an hour from Griffin, either South or North. So I kind of cover a wide circuit between wholesale and retail. And as far as my advertising goes, it extends about 30 to 40 miles around Griffin. So I'm, I'm kind of a good, I have a good spread, but um, I come back to Griffin, unfortunately. Good. Sometimes you, I work any, late just so I can any stay. Any hail around your area? Uh, not really. We had oh, a quiet. very, very small, blip come through early in the year uh it actually hit manheim auction and that Ooh. was yeah but that's not any work i would ever be interested in doing but <laughs> yeah. i think i've done four or five retail hell jobs out of that storm so yeah now, how long have you been pushing steve i started when i was 15 with my dad and 15. i'm gonna be yeah and i'm gonna be 34 so you know wow 19 it. years yeah, about yeah, and uh, check the math on John. Yes, yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna agree. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, so at, my dad started off with Dent Wizard, and um, he was actually a service advisor at a uh, car dealership, and saw a dent guy there, and I think he was kind of looking to make a career move at that point. And the uh, company that this guy was working for was called Fix a Dent. Uh, here in Georgia and they were hiring at the time. So my dad hired on with them, trained, and it wasn't short. It was shortly after that Dent Wizard bought them out. And um, that's how my dad was with Dent Wizard for a while. And that was way back in the day when, you know, everybody was leaving. And my dad was one of those over here in Georgia and started his own company in 02. But from 15 up, I'm tinkering in the shop on hoods and he's just kind of showing me the ropes and he never pushed me into PDR. He always said, you know, do whatever you want to do, but it started off as kind of a summer job and uh, kind of grew from there and, you know, went to college, got a four year degree in business management. And at the same time I was working maybe one or two dealerships on my own and graduated and then went full time in PDR in 06. So that's, that's like the, the Mike Toledo story. Mike, Mike went to college to become a lawyer and made more money doing PDR than he could have being a lawyer. Yeah. So I always you joke did absolutely about absolutely nothing with your, your degree, huh? Exactly. Yeah. I don't need, you know, I probably burn it up for, you know, kindling or something, <laughs> but, um, but I, yeah, I always joke about how I wish I could trade that it four and a half years in for four and a half years of income in PDR. Cause it'd be, sure. I'd like to make the trade sure. like that. And uh, my wife always reminds me that I met her in college. So oh. she, shuts, she shuts me up real quick when I say, yeah, oh, I'm we sure. want to be careful with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flick the switch on that one quick. Right. <laughs> so are you, are you a one man band 
Not really. My, my dad still owns the company. Um, he's, I say he's semi-retired. He works two days a week. He lives about two hours north of me, kind of up in the mountain area of Georgia. But he's, he's pulled in the reins back a good bit. We have one other guy working for us. It's a guy that I've known since the fifth grade, and he's strictly doing wholesale work. Um, but I do the majority. I do the lion's share of it all between wholesale, retail, body shops. I kind of, and then um, motorcycle tanks as well, which I wouldn't even do if it wasn't for Daniel's setup with motorcycles. Because, you know, I, I would never want to work on a tank on the bike or without that vice. It'd just be too much of a pain, and I would not even touch it. But so I kind of got my hands in a lot of different aspects of PDR. But I'm definitely out of the three of us. I'm pretty much pulling the whole most of the weight. Put it that way. Yeah, and so I wanted you, to have Stephen on because I, I've known Stephen now for quite a few years, and we've met at MTE a couple times. And he's he's one of the good guys out there, you know. And and he's innovative. He comes up with good ideas, and he's all about helping the industry. And I really wanted to bring him on here as man of the streets to uh, give his take on things and and maybe you know shed some knowledge and but everyone know that, Hey, we're all just dent guys and we're out there doing the same thing. We're pushing dents for oh, everything. Absolutely. You know, and what specifically Vince did you want him to talk about? Well, what, what tools have you bought in the last, you know, month or two? And, and what, what's the, what's your favorite tool? What's your go-to tool that you, the first thing out of your bag? Well, because I'm mainly a door dinger, uh, I love my PDR finesse uh, door hooks. I think it's the 36. I think it's called the ultimate door tool um, with a ratcheting handle. That's probably my, that's, I use that down a door most of the time. I also have the. Uh, that's the left and the right? It's, no, it's only one, but it's totally because one. of the, yeah, because it's just a yeah. straight J. Um, okay. But I do have the left and the right that has the weird little kick on it that has like a real yeah. sharp point on there. Yeah. And I use that also. When I first started using that, I had trouble getting it down some doors just because if you can't wedge it really wide open because of that kick, I would have some troubles. But yeah. I, you know, figured out better ways to get that down. And I mainly use that for sharp uh, dents down doors. But most of the time I'm using the, uh, the 36 uh, as my okay. go-to door tool. Now, are, um, you strictly, are you strictly mobile or do you have a retail shop? I don't have a retail shop. I'm mostly mobile. Here at my home, I have a detached shop. It's just a two-car garage. And if I'm doing a hail job or if it's anything that's extensive, it's going to take me several hours, I'll just communicate with customers and have them meet me here and drop their vehicle and I'll work on it here at my house and they'll just come pick it up. So that kind of gives me the flexibility to do that, but without all of the overhead of having a traditional you know, okay. storefront. So, all right. Now, as a strictly mobile guy, here's what I see coming across the Facebook feed quite a bit. Using a van or a pickup? I have a Transit Connect. Got one of the Transit yeah. vans. I yeah. see a lot of guys transitioning to that. Um, you're able to roll the cart in. You don't have to collapse anything. You don't have to pick anything up. Well, I actually don't have a cart in mine. I actually went to Home Depot and bought a Husky toolbox, took the wheels off, put it in the back, you know, strapped it all down and everything. And I have all my tools in there. Nice. I went from a, so being mobile, I've been through a lot of different vehicles. I've had Jeeps, I've had trucks. Uh, before I went to the Transit, I had a Ford Explorer. And uh, it all worked well, but this, even though the Transits are ugly as can be, I mean, I don't like any, the look of any of those. Just for functionality, it works. It's just perfect. Yeah. For, for yeah. You know what would make a Transit Connect the best? If they made it in diesel. You I could heard they were doing that. Though. Well, they've been saying that oh, for only years in Europe. Now. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Europe has had Transit Connect diesels for years. In fact, yeah, I think yeah. they came out with diesel. They didn't even have a gas model. EPA will kill that. Anything, anything super small, super light with a diesel engine, that nah, it'll never fly in the U.S. Hmm. Why is that? Uh, uh, the EPA had never. It would never pass emissions in any oh. way, shape, or form ever. Right. Like, kind of like a Volkswagen uh, Passat. Yep. Yeah. So, well, that's cool. And what have you bought? I know you, you went shop, shopping at Anson and just got some stuff today, but uh, yeah, you got some stuff today. Um, and you're a little bit of a tool whore too. You do like a, tools. Little, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't have the power of the purse for our, well, let's put it this way. I buy a lot of things, but I space it out because you know, I'm not the owner yet. So um, right. I, I try to geek out as much as I can without flipping any red flags. 
with sure. the old man, you know. Not but, all uh, of us could be a Daniel Grom to buy every tool that's ever made. <laughs> all true, you know. Well, that's my trick is I, I spread it out. I buy like one tool, you know, a, a month at least or, you know, one tool a week. You know, instead of doing a, a big order or anything like that, then it doesn't, you know, hurt as much. Right. Sure. Well, the, me, it hurts um, every time I stop into Anson. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as new tool, well, the tools that I got today, I got the uh, slide hammer that Ultra sells. I bought it through oh, Anson. Yeah. And, you know, it has the, you can change the head on it to be a pass through or you can close off one end. Uh, as far as the head of the tab that's goes, the, that's the killer thing about that. That's the, yeah. That's and I, this is the first time having a slide hammer with that because my the slide hammer I'm replacing. I don't even know where I got it from. It's it's old and outdated. Uh, this has the removable weight on it. It's got the spring dampener on there, and I'm not sure what the weight is with this weight on versus with it off. But when you take it off, it's it's considerably lighter. So. <laughs> In yeah. my opinion, that is the best slide hammer on the market. Absolutely. Yeah. For big damage. Maybe well, not for heel damage, but originally I was looking for the pull dog and I was told that they don't you can't get that anymore and that this is the closest thing to it. And um well, I'll have I have Kevin Andrews in the other room. I'm gonna I'm gonna corroborate that story. Well, I have yeah, you might I have a right. pull dog and I'd much rather have that ultra because the pull dog is a little bit light. It's a lightweight slide hammer. You know, that is the best of both worlds. You got a pass through, you got a closed off end, you got a light slide hammer, you got a heavy slide hammer, and you got the spring. So you get it all in one package and it's extremely well made. I mean, and it's it's probably the sexiest one out there too. I like the uh I like the colors on it. Yeah, so, it's yeah, black and right. red. It's cool. Yeah, can't go wrong. So I haven't used it yet, just got that today. But as far as some new things that I've bought, I have never until recently had cold glue. So I got some tab tape and I've been kind of playing with that for the last few days. A lot of the uh, wholesale lots that I work give me some larger damage because they know that I can handle, you know, big stuff, small stuff. And, you know, this is this is coming pretty handy for unlocking some pretty big uh, dents without having to heat up a glue gun and wait for it and everything, you know, it's just jump right into Definitely this handy yeah. now yeah, with you, the tap tape you got is, is there is that the keko version or is that uh the older version because i know that the newer version does have keko tabs on it i'm not sure i bought it through black uh, plague that's okay that's the older version but as they work okay. just they work just fine okay gotcha but yeah i mean i've you know i've used it two or three times and i mean it's moved the metal every time i haven't you know had any issues with that so that was a good buy um, and I also purchased, and I was telling you about this, uh, Vince, I purchased the Viper tabs, uh, oh, yes. from Kika. Oh yeah. So yeah. there's 20 in a pack. So you can really string this together and make a oh. long snaky looking now, crease. Go ahead. Now guys, um, what he's talking about is that's the tabs that are linked together from Kiko that they all interconnect and you can bend them and flex them to follow the contours of the panel. Yeah. And that snap sound apart. was him popping that apart and make yeah. them any length that you need. You can make them longer. You can make them shorter. They can be a J shape and still a complete interconnected tab. Yeah. So you have a crease that is caused by like a bike handle. It's never straight, you know, it's it kind of squiggly a, like a snake. Well, you could yeah. take that interchangeable tab and make it the length of the crease and make it follow the, the flow of the crease itself. Cool. Right. And, and so you have to use a pass through on it. You do have to use a pass through for the guys yeah. in case you're wondering. And since we're on the topic of uh, glue pulling, because I ordered from Anson and I love that they give you a little goodie bag with a sample of tabs. And, you know, I probably got like 20 Magnatech stickers by now. I've yeah. got tons <laughs> of stuff. They gave me a sample of the hog glue, which I'm looking forward to using this coming week. The only glue that I currently use is tab weld. Um, but I've been he hearing a lot of people talk highly about this. So I'm actually very excited about putting this in the gun and playing around with this this week as yeah, well. Let me know what you think. I will. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Great glue. I use it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that, uh, brings us, we're, we're running out of time here. I think that brings us to the end. How much, how much longer are you going to be out there at, at Anson there, Vince? 
oh, I'm going to be here till Saturday. I got another two days. I got an EV event going on tomorrow. We got some training going on for the EV class. And then uh, Kevin Andrews is jumping off over to uh, New Jersey. To, uh, so to do Vince was TV. showing me some secret, top secret uh, stuff that might be coming out. When will we be able to talk about that stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, not yet. Not yet. You know, when but I am going home with that. Yeah, I, 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 I do have a cool prototype. You're going to send me one. No, there, there's only one made, and I'm the one that got it. Oh, what? We will stare lovingly at the picture. To Wikipedia, prototype Man. is open. There's no love. I mean, you know, when yeah. we went to MTE this year, I gave I gave Vince a ton of tools, and this is how he repays me. I'm going to send a couple of those tools right back to you. How's that? <laughs> they won't have a handle on them because he cut all those off. But sure. Yeah. Well, you know what Daniel does? He, he gets he gets dent lights and then sends me broken dent lights. Here, why don't you try these out? They're already let me know, broken. Let me know what it takes to fix this. Yeah. No, that's not true. He he told me he, he was an electrical engineer and that he could fix anything. And I sent it to him and he cried all about it, how he could. I went to DeVry for one trimester. <laughs> yeah, he tried it and didn't like it. I didn't like it. Got out. Yeah. <laughs> they had right, this well, thing called calculus. And calculus, <laughs> you know. Math is calculus. hard. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, all right guys Mr. Well, Rester, for first of all what? yeah hey stevens thanks for coming on really, thanks for really coming on it. no i appreciate it guys it was fun i had a good time cool yeah. and uh you know thanks guys for tuning in hope you enjoyed this episode always remember level up your tools don't do stupid stuff and join the revolution mm-hmm.